Hello guys, what is up? It's your boy, Spooky Noodles, and I am back with another video. Today, we're doing book mail. We got quite a few books. Not all of them are exactly book mail. I did get one from Ollie's, so whatever you want to say, I got it from an outlet store. Um, but all the rest are book mail uh, for, like, legitly, so, you know... Uh, if you think that I shouldn't put the uh, Ollie's book in here, then you're dead wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here with a few books I want to talk about. Um, and uh, yeah, so first book we have here is Peter Benchley's Jaws. Now, this is the original, if I'm correct. Uh, let's see here. This one says it's the 12th printing in 1975 this edition was published in 1975 the original was published in 1974 but this is still an old copy you know what i'm saying it's a beautiful copy too um but let me read you the back i mean you all know what jaws is about right but let me read the back anyways pick oh uh, wait this is just a blurb Okay, we don't have a synopsis for this one, but you know what Jaws is about, okay? So, oh, and uh, I wanted to show this off first before I even talked about the books, but uh, I got this in the mail, and it looks like it came with a sticker too. It might be hard to show up on camera, but I'm going to show the sticker first. I don't know if you can read that. It says, every story ends as a ghost story. You probably can't read that. It's not coming in clearly. But anyways, the bookmark I got is actually transparent. You can kind of see it better than the sticker, actually. It's like, oh, ghost. Uh, it's a ghost bookmark that is transparent, which I thought was super cool. So I had to get it. You know your boy had to get it. Next, we have Medusa's Son by Otis Bateman. Um, this is going to be awesome. I've owned all of the crime or the splatter crime books. Um, I thought this was a fantastic deal. I don't know who had the idea, either Brian, Otis, or Judith. Um, but I own them all and I cannot wait to read them and I cannot wait to ingest them and maybe even make my own type of story if I get motivated by it. But anyways, let me read the synopsis real quick. Rob Medusa's son, Sonnet was on his way to becoming the next heavyweight boxing champ of the world in 1972. He possesses a stare so intimidating it freezes the blood of any opponent, much like the mythical creature he was named after. When he is injured at his job, his dreams are now nothing more than a distant memory. Rob decides to go through it with a bank robbery with his drug-addled childhood friend Chrissy. Chrissy turns it into a slaughterhouse and leaves Rob behind after he is wounded in the ensuing shootout. When Rob finds out he was double-crossed and his family was brutally murdered, he plans a depraved revenge for his one-time friend. Rob's out now, and whoever wronged him will pay in bloody bodily destruction. And that goes for anyone unlucky enough to who, who gets in his murderous, unhinged path. Splatter crime. I am super looking forward to this book. Um, uh, this one comes in at 153... Oh, wait. That's the afterword. It comes in at 145 pages, so a very quick read. And I'm actually going to start these very soon. I might start with the Medusa Sun just because I love the way the story sounds by the synopsis. Um, it sounds like the most interesting one to me. But the other two are by two of my favorite authors. So I might just... I, it's going to be a struggle deciding which one to go with. But that's Medusa Sun by Otis Bateman. Next we have Firebug by David Blair. Uh, yeah. So someone reached out to me on uh, Facebook and um, they were like, hey, uh, I asked, I asked, um, actually, this is how it actually happened. I asked Books of Horror for, for books by authors who have low ratings, therefore, like, uh, under 10 ratings on uh, Amazon. 
and uh, people came through with a lot of good options. Uh, one of the options was David Blair's Firebug, and um, he offered it as a coming-of-age horror story, and immediately I was locked in. I wanted to read this puppy because coming-of-age stories are just my jam, my jelly. So I had to pick it up. I own a coming of age collection, if you will. It's upstairs. Um, it's got over like 50 books in my shelf, on my shelf of coming of age stories. So this just gets added to the pile. But let me read you what the back says or the synopsis. Daniel Patrick has a history of setting things on fire. Among the residents of the small town of Ferdinand and... A Ferdinand, his dangerous obsession has even earned him a nickname, Firebug. It isn't until a strange winter wind blows into Ferdinand that perhaps Daniel's impulse to set fires comes in handy. Because in the back of that wind rides a mysterious and deadly creature that only Daniel can understand and stop. Firebug by David Blair. All right, next is someone that you all know and love. He's one of the best horror authors ever to write horror, and that is the man himself, Richard Lehman. Look at that big lettering for Richard Lehman and the tale, Dreadful Tales up at the top. This is a short story collection, I believe. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm almost 100% sure that this is a horror collection. Yeah, it is. So it has this bibli uh, bibliographic information. He has the preface. Then Invitation to Murder, The Grab, Saving Grace, Barney's Bigfoot Museum. That sounds fucking awesome. Uh, Herman, The Champion, The Maiden, The Good Cigar is a Smoke. A Good Cigar is a Smoke. I feel like I read that wrong. Um, I'm a, not a criminal. Cri cri criminal. Criminal. <laughs> Oscar's Audition, Into the Pit, Spooked, The Good Deed, The Direct Approach, Good Vibrations, Phil the Vampire, Paying Joe Back, The Fur Coat, Blarney, Dracusian's Driver, Roadside Pickup, Wishbone, First Date, Stickman, Mop Up. Wow, that's a lot of short stories in this huge chunker of a book. Um, someone told me, I think someone told me about Oscar's audition. Yeah, that's the story in here. Oscar's audition, page 143. Um, but Barney's Bigfoot Museum sounds like the most interesting. And it's only 18 pages long. So I might start with that one. Yes, I'm going to read these stories out of order. But uh, I'm going to like, I think I'm going to eat this up like over time. So I'm going to like, every time I feel like I want to in just a Richard Lehman story. I'm going to hop into this, read one story, then hop out, then read something else for a little bit, then come back to this, and then read another short story, then hop out, you know what I mean? Because I always have this, like, need or want to read Richard Lehman, but I just cannot ingest huge books anymore. And yes, this is a chunker, but you heard what I said, little by little, you know? So, yeah, I can read the back for you guys. I only read the back of this one because it is a Richard Lehman book, but for the most part, I don't usually read backs to collections. That's just me. Or anthologies. So, But here we go. It's a Richard Lehman, so I'll make an exception. So here we go. On a hot summer night in West LA, Shane Malone sits sweating, sweltering in front of a computer, thinking how easy it should be to write a contribution a contribution for an anthology, an anthology in which every chilling tale must end in the death of a 22-year-old woman in her apartment. Ooh. Ideas swirl, but it has to be a grabber. Shane doesn't want to look like a slouch, and the the deafening music blaring from next door is not helping. Shane furiously bangs on his the neighbor's door, ready to let rip. But Francine just happens to be the 22-year-old woman who will not be argued with. And Shane is about to find out that life really can't imitate art. So it begins the first tale in this terrifying collection of short stories. A delicious cornucopia 
of homicidal maniacs, vampires, and lust-crazed teenagers that showcase the macabre genius of Richard Lehman, one of the best writers working in the genre today, Cemetery Dance. A brilliant writer, Sunday Express, Lehman offers the unexpected, well-rounded characters blown about in a narrative that moves like the wind, Publishers Weekly. Holy crap, guys. And let me say, there's not much of a cover here because his name and the title kind of take up a lot of room. But in that small little image, that looks like a Goosebumps book, don't it? The first Goosebumps book. Uh, what was it called? The Haunted Mansion or something like that? A Haunted House? I don't remember what it was called, but that kind of looks like that. But anyways, um, I'm looking forward to reading this these stories. Um, the first one sounds amazing, just by that synopsis alone, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I was about to say, I don't really ever read prefaces, but the first line in this preface that I just glanced at, it says, me, I don't read prefaces, forwards, or introductions. I was just like, that's so me. So now I gotta read the preface, you know what I mean? But uh, that's Dreadful Tales by Richard Lehman. I will read a short story from this very soon. Not to you guys. I just, you know, on my own. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I was told to read two short stories from this collection by Judith Sonnet. And uh, I don't remember what one of them was. But I think Otis is on... Or, uh, what was it called? Uh, it was a 143... Oscars audition. Yeah. I was told to read that one, so yeah. Next, we have Crimson by Gord Rolo. Now, I was going to get the... I, I think I actually I might own the uh, original paperback, but the author said this is his preferred edition, not only because he, I think he gets paid for it, but um, this is a more updated, edited uh, edition, and I think it even has a short story in this at, at the end. So... And if you, oh, wow, um, wow, the, uh, print is kind of faded, and, uh, this is not Gord's fault, obviously, this is a printing issue, but it looks like they were running out of ink when making this book, um, oh, it's not like that the whole book, though, in the beginning, actually, it looks like it's nice, but, uh, it looks like they ran out of ink at some point, <laughs> but anyways, um, wow, um, Gord Rolo quickly coming up the ranks out of nowhere after i read peeler which he peeler is a character i believe is that is in his book strange magic which i don't know anything about that book but peeler was incredible i really loved peeler um it was a brutal read and uh, i highly recommend it to everyone but reading that one made me want to check more out by him and when he said he had a coming of age story well, Judas said he had a coming-of-age story. Immediately, I was like, I got to get it. You know, I love coming-of-age stories. I'm that's, I'm a sucker for them. So, I got Crimson. Um, I'm going to check my coming-of-age shelf and see if I have the other copy. And if I do, maybe I'll uh, not auction it off, but uh, maybe I'll do a uh, giveaway on my channel or something. But anyways, let me read the back for you guys. It's a long synopsis, so strap in. Crimson. It had been years since the horror struck, bringing murder and madness to the usual quiet farming community of Dunville, Ontario. What the police found inside of Jacob Harrison's house that dreadful night was so sickening and unthinkable, evil, the townspeople tried to quietly bury the dead and pretend it never happened. The good citizens firmly believed it had been a freak occurrence, and the horror was over after Jacob was found swinging from the noose in his upstairs bedroom. They were wrong. A monstrous evil still waits on the abandoned farm, biding, biding its time at the bottom of an icy, stagnant well. Guided by a force they can't understand, four childhood friends soon find themselves excavating a pit in the field behind the foreboding house. Soon their shovels hit something solid and made of metal. Beneath the sheet of rusted metal hides a secret staircase leading down into darkness. Down inside its concrete depths, the evil waits. 
Their destiny is sealed from the moment they descend. The people of Dunville will soon be reminded about the horrible things that happened all those years ago because they're about to start again. And then there's a Midwest book review uh, says fans of Bentley Little and Brian Keene will enjoy Rolo's cutting edge, dark and scary, small Canadian town horror thriller. Holy shit, that's a lot to say. That's a mouthful. A fantastic coming of age book with a little bit of everything for every fan of horror or every horror fan. Famous monsters of film, film land. Wow, Gord Rolo is one of those authors I want to check out very, very soon. Uh, actually, I've already checked him out. I meant his longer work because Peeler was a novelette. That's just a small taste of his work. Um, this is going to be a book I read in the future. I'm currently... I um, actually don't know where my books are. Uh, but I need to start reading something soon again. And Crimson might be just up my alley because I love coming of age stories. And when in doubt, read Coming of Age because cream, coming up the creaming, coming of age is one of my favorite subgenres of horror there is. Like just the idea of people battling this monster as a child. You're so vulnerable as a child. And all the fun childhood things you remember come up, and everyone had a childhood, even if it was a shitty one. Everyone had a childhood. You know, you just, childhood is from, you know, when you're a kid to like a teenager, you know, that's the period of time. Everyone goes through it unless they die early, I guess. But, um, I apologize if you died early and you're watching this, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Or if you're someone who happened to know someone that died early, I apologize. That's probably insensitive of me and I apologize, but, um, yeah, comparing Bentley Little and Brian Keene to Gord Rolo, I've read both authors. Bentley Little, I read The Store, which I loved. And Brian Keene, I've read a few things by him, and I've loved everything I've read by him, except for maybe one thing, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. But otherwise, oh, you know what? The one story, which I, I think I would have loved it if it weren't for the fact I was burnt out on coming of age at the time. But Ghoul by Brian Keene is a book that I need to revisit one day because I didn't fully enjoy it as a coming of age story. It was a good book. Like compared to other books, it should be up at the top of the list. But because I've read so many great coming of age stories, it kind of dipped down on the list. And therefore everyone always reminds me, Oh, Brian Keene has a coming of age story. And I'm like, I know I read it and I didn't really fully like it. I gave it three and a half stars, you know, um, but still, I do really like Brian Keene. Um, the Darkness at the Edge of Town is one of my favorite books by him. Uh, the Long Way Home is a good one, too. And uh, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, yeah, I talked about a lot about Gord Rolo. I probably needed to stop talking about Gord Rolo soon. Even though I did really enjoy Peeler, um, we need to move on to the last book I got. And that last book is not technically book mail. I just recently got it today, actually at this place called Ollie's Outlet, um, or just Ollie's. Um, I'm sure you might not, you might know what it is depending on where you live. Um, I'm not sure if Ollie's is across America or not, but um, we have them here in Michigan. And uh, yeah, the book I got was Later by Stephen King. This is actually the only book I think, other than The Colorado Kid and Joyland, I don't, that's, like, I own every Stephen King book there is. You know, my my family made sure I owned every hardback and paperback that, that uh, there ever was. So, yeah. But let me read what the back of it says, the back of it says, and then we can end the video. So here we go. Sometimes growing up means facing your demons. The son of a struggling single mother, Jamie Conklin, just wants an ordinary childhood. Uh, but Jamie is no ordinary child. Born with an unnatural ability, his mom urges him to keep secret. Jamie can see what no one else can see and learn what no one else can learn. But the cost of using this ability is higher than Jamie can imagine. He, he, as he discovers when a New York police detective uh, draws him into a, the pursuit of a killer, a killer, who has threatened to stroke from beyond the strike from beyond the grave. 
Later is Stephen King at his finest, a terrifying and touching story of innocence lost and the trials that test our sense of right and wrong. With echoes of King classic nob King's classic novel It, later is a powerful, haunting, unforgettable exploration of what it takes to stand up to evil in all the faces it wears. Wait a minute. So is this like a coming of age story? This is kind of confusing. But anyways, Later by Stephen King. That is it for me. So out of all these books, which one am I most excited for? I don't know. Um, it's not Stephen King's Later, to be honest with you, if I'm being honest with you. It's not because it's bad or anything. It's just I think I want to read this the other crime thrillers that he wrote before I read Later. So that's why I'm not really excited because I know I'm not going to read it right away. Um, Richard Lehman's Dreadful Tales is very exciting to own, especially in this great condition. Firebug was a really good, uh, coming of age. I can't wait to read it. Medusa's Son, very good book. And of course, Jaws. You can't forget Jaws. And then Crimson by Gord Rollo. If I'm being honest here, which one I'm looking forward to the most? It's between Richard Lehman's Dreadful Tales and Crimson by Gord Rollo. But... Honestly, they all sound amazing, you know, uh, but I'm only excited for those two books because the one book is by Gord Rollo, who I just recently read and I adored. And then the other one is Richard Lehman. And I've been wanting to read Richard Lehman, but I cannot read one of his big books at the moment. Sorry, I got like spit. But anyways, um, I can't ingest a huge chunker of a book at the moment. So... But I'm dying to read some Richard Lehman. So that's why The Short Stories is a book that I'm excited to have. Because, um, or Dreadful Tales is something I'm excited to have. But anyways, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you have a spooky night. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, guys.